Hey everyone, I'm Janelle and today I have a confession for you. I love tiny houses and so today we're gonna make a tiny house coaster because it's, it's adorable. Let's get started. So today I'm gonna be using one of our acrylic mini looms. We've got four colors of these. You can check them out at spruceandlinen.com. For the warp I'm using 8A cotton and I'm going to single warp 17 strings onto my loom. Next what I'm gonna do is three things. I'm going to weave in a piece of cardstock just using plain weave. I'm going to take this Loops and Threads cozy wool yarn and do a twining stitch followed by three rows of plain weave. If you need a more in-depth tutorial for this part, I'll link a video right here that will help you get started with that. Okay, so now we're gonna start weaving up this house and it's actually really easy. We're basically gonna weave a square and like a triangle on top of it. So I'm gonna grab this. This is also Loops and Threads. Um, I think this is Lush Alpaca, not Cozy Wool. It's like a really pretty beige color. I'm gonna be weaving about 15 rows of this. One, two, three, four. So let's see how long this is. Okay, so it's a little more than an arm's length for me and Goodness, I keep getting my yarn wrapped around my mic. And we're gonna weave this square out in the middle. This is one reason why I did an odd amount of warp strings because we want this little house to be actually centered on the loom and in order to do that, we need an odd amount of warp strings. I'm going to be starting on the fifth warp string in from the side, but as you can see, our previous row went over the warp string, so I need to start under for this one. We're gonna weave all the way across to the fifth from the other side as well. And then we're just gonna go back and forth for 15 total rows. Okay, so now we're done the little square for our house. I had a lot of extra yarn, so I obviously mismeasured a little bit. I'm gonna leave a decently long tail here because we wanna tuck this in later, but I am gonna just sort of tuck that little tail to the back just so it's out of our way. And you know what we're gonna do just to make our lives a little bit easier? Um, we're gonna take this tail, lift up that, and we're gonna loop it back around that edge string. Um, that just feels a little better to me. <laughs> it just makes that edge a little bit tidier. So I'll tuck that back in there. And then next we're gonna grab um, this gray yarn, same line of yarn. It's just the dark gray color. And I'm gonna just take one arm's length here. I think that will be more than enough again. And now we're gonna be weaving the roof of our house, which is basically just gonna be a triangle. But we're gonna do the bottom of the triangle just a little bit different. So I wanna come in one string more than we did for the actual house so that our roof has a little bit of overhang. So I'm gonna start under. Remembering again, I wanna go the opposite of what's going on in this row so that our plain weave just continues on throughout the piece. So I'm going over all of this, and then I'm gonna wrap around this string here leaving a nice long tail here again. And then we're gonna come back and I'm coming in on that fourth string in. Now we're basically doing two rows of the same to start our triangle just so that our roof has a little bit of extra height to it. So what I'm gonna do once again with this tail over here, let's just tighten this up a little bit. Since we're gonna have two loops around on this side, I want there to be two loops around on this side. So again, I'm just gonna wrap this tail around one extra time so that it matches what's going on on the other side. And then I can just tuck that back in there. So to create a triangle with plain weave, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna drop a warp string every row we go up. So we ended on this one in the first row, now we're ending on the next one in. So same thing on this other side. We finished on this string in the last row, so we're coming in one string for the next row. All right, so now we're at the peak of the roof, and I'm just making sure that this is all woven as tightly as I want it to be. Once again, we can, um, we're gonna fish this yarn to the back. So you can see we have one wrap around the very tip as well. And then we can trim off some excess, leaving a nice long tail. Now we're gonna be going back in with the white and filling all of this in. But instead of just weaving it next to the house, we're actually going to interlock the background with the house and I'll show you how to do that. So again, with plain weave, I'm gonna go in here and 
for every loop of the beige, we're gonna loop around the white. So I'm gonna go between these two loops first. So you can see here, I'm going into the area of the beige. I'm gonna weave that in, really paying attention to my sides to make sure they're nice and straight. Then we're gonna go back. Let's tuck that in there. And see now the shapes are actually interlocked. There's no space between them. And we're gonna do that again here. So next we're going between these two loops. Actually, I should zoom in. And then we can go back and we're just gonna keep doing that all the way up. So again, now we're between these two loops and we're interlocking those shapes. Especially on a coaster, we want something that feels really sturdy and I don't wanna go through the extra trouble of sewing shapes together on something this small. Now, we're gonna do the roof a little bit differently than we just did the main part of the house. And I'm actually just gonna butt up against these. So we're gonna have a little bit of a slit, but that's not gonna be a huge deal. So I'm gonna weave two rows since we have two loops next to our roof. And then we're gonna do the same thing moving up. So we're gonna go up to the loop and then we can turn around on the same row as that loop. This is just because I want the lines of the roof to be a little bit cleaner. And since we just have like a tiny little gap here, it's just not that big of a deal. So I'm gonna keep doing that. Again, moving up with the roof. So now we've finished up until the peak of the roof on the left side. So we're just gonna repeat everything we just did on the left onto the right side. So I'm gonna take a new piece of yarn and do that. Now that we're at the peak of the roof on this side as well, I'm going to, since I don't have much yarn left here on the right, I'm gonna grab the yarn from the left and we're going to finish this off the way that we started it. So first I'm going to do three rows of plain weave. Okay, so we've got our three rows of plain weave and now we need one row of twining. So for one row of twining, of course, it includes one more row of plain weave. Now, we need to do a twining on this last row of plain weave, but I don't wanna just turn around and start doing that because it's going to wanna pull this string in closer and closer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let that one just be what it is. We're gonna cut off a bit of a tail. I'm going to take a new piece about so long. I just have this new piece and I'm gonna start my twining over here and move toward the left. Okay, so my twining is done. I'm just gonna squish down the top a little bit more to kind of look like how we started. The next thing we're gonna do is tuck in all these ends and add a window. So I like to use one of these plastic needles for tucking in the ends. It just makes it a little bit easier. So we're gonna take all of those ends from the front and bring them to the back so that we don't miss any of them. And these ones are super easy to tuck in into plain weave. I'm just going to take my end and I'm going to go down this channel of wefts. We're only grabbing the loops on the back of the weaving. And I'm gonna grab quite a few of them. Since I want this to be a coaster, I wanna make sure those ends are tucked in really well. And then you can just trim off the excess carefully and your end disappears. So now we're just gonna do that exact same thing for all of the ends. Now for this one on the roof, I do wanna tuck in the dark colors with the dark color, just because if I tuck this in with the white, it might peek through just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do here to make sure it's tucked in enough is I'm gonna go up through these ones first, and then I'm going to turn around and go back down kinda of in the next row. Let's look at the, from the front. Yeah, you can't even tell at all. So that looks good there and we can keep going. Okay, so now we're ready to add the little house. I'm gonna use my little plastic yarn needle for this as well. And I'm going to grab a length of the 8-8 cotton um, and we're gonna use this to weave in a little window. So you can place your window wherever you like. I'm going to go with kind of out in the middle. Make sure that in the back you're leaving a nice long tail that you can tie later. So all I'm doing here is kind of centering that window and I'm going to stitch this in a really, really simple way. Let's go down here. And I don't wanna to pull too tight on this string or it's gonna kind of try to suck in those warp strings. And I'm gonna go back up here. So I'm starting just with like a square 
And then I kind of want to make some panes in the window. So I have my square, then I'm gonna come in inside of the square lines and I'm gonna make some panes because I don't want these panes to sort of like pull on the string of the outside of the window. And it's not gonna be able to be quite perfectly centered because there is a warp string directly in the center of this, but that looks pretty centered there. And then I'm gonna come up through here and then across. So now we have a cute little window for our house. And to finish off this window, I'm just gonna flip this around and I'm going to fish this tail toward the other tail. So I'm just gonna kind of loop underneath one of the wefts. Then I'm gonna tie these ends in a knot because I really don't want any of that to come undone. And since it's a little bit more loose, I don't trust just tucking in those ends. So that's in a knot now, and now we can tuck in these ends the same way that we did the other wefts. Oh yeah, it's weird how the lighting like changes it. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, so we just need to get this thing off the loom, tie some knots, and, and then we have ourselves a nice little coaster. What I'm gonna do here, because I wanna tie knots on the end of all of these strings, since the twining is just with a yarn, I don't really trust it to keep the warp strings in place. So what I'm hoping I can do, if your warp isn't too terribly tight, you can just slip the warp off. If your warp feels really tight, don't risk breaking the notches of your loom. Cut it off of your loom, but just try to cut it off like really, really close to the top. But one trick I have is that when I'm pulling it off the teeth, I'm taking those two warp strings and I'm pulling up toward that tooth to try to make it a little bit looser. And then the other side will just slip off. So now I'm gonna grab a weight. <laughs> but you can use anything heavy and I'm going to place this on top of the little coaster so that I can try to tie these knots. Now we do have an odd amount of warp strings, so we have to have one group of three on each end. So I'm gonna use that where, where there's a natural group of three, which is here. So I'm gonna start on this end, and I'm just using overhand knots because those are the best for, you know, they will not come undone, and they also make it so that your fringe sticks straight out instead of kind of in more than one direction. Okay, so now we're just going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Now we need to cut these down to size and then we're gonna brush them out just so they're a little bit floofier. I'm gonna use the little groove of my table, as I always like to do, to cut these so that they're kind of the same length. Let's try that much. Then I'm using a little rope brush. This one is from Unfettered Co. And we do have Unfettered Co. discount codes for you. It gets you a percentage off and then we get a little kickback which helps support this channel. So check out that in the description below. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you're gonna love our coaster tutorial playlist. Oh my gosh, it's so cute.